The Infernal Hordes is a new endgame activity in Diablo 4. It's primarily a wave-based activity. You're going to be fighting wave after wave of demon forces in hell. So you know, if any of you have ever played wave-based gameplay before, you'll know that things escalate. Yeah, and everyone hates them. <laughs> and all sorts of things Let's be honest, nobody likes wave-based mechanics. People hate it in Last Epoch. The notion of infernal offers. In between each wave, you'll make... Oh, really what you need to do to access it is earn your way up to World Tier 3 and then complete an eternal quest line that takes you back to hell. Honestly, the Infernal Halts is the least interesting thing about the new season for me. For World Tier 1 and 2 players, we've built out a seasonal progression that'll help them become more powerful in order to be able to confront the Infernal Hordes. First is you can earn reputation, and that reputation applies to a reputation track that earns lots of really cool rewards that'll make you more powerful as you progress on. The same as last three. season, eh? <clears throat> the other thing we've built are micro dungeons called Hell Breaches that offer a glimpse at the Infernal Hordes mechanics. Micro and they dungeons. They give you a chance to learn the mechanics before you confront the Infernal Hordes at World Tier 3. The final boss in this season is the Fell Council. And the Fell Council is some familiar faces that you might recognize from Diablo 2. These were priests of the Zacharum, holy men who were corrupted and basically became vessels of hatred in their own right. The council members in Diablo 2 tried to help contain Mephisto in his soul stone. And of course, Mephisto being Mephisto, slowly but surely corrupted them. And eventually they had soul stones pierced into their hands and became super powerful. But eventually you overcame them and sent them to hell. Through the course of the story, resummoned them. They've been reborn, slightly new powers, but the same animosity toward you. What's interesting about this boss encounter is there are five council members, but you're only going to fight three of them at once. This allows us to Why is then that? create many different flavors of the boss fight for the fell council. In fact, it's about 10 variations in all. And so every time <laughs> Many you different that council ten. fight, there's a very good chance you're going to have <laughs> but to it's just to get new legendaries, you'll be able to get rare materials. Arena's just boring. Might have scoured the whole of sanctuary. Just a very boring, boring playstyle, really, to just face wave yeah. over, after wave over and over again. Just, yeah. Even with a boss at the end, it's just boring. So it's cool, and I don't want to be negative, Nancy. I think it's cool that there is more endgame content, obviously, right? Endgame ability, uh, things you can do. Into cosmetics to apply but um and also have unique vfx and sound effects to really create the sense that they were forged in hell one particular one that i but i think yeah not it's, it's not going to do much boots. personally boots you said no one's funny though pretty much while he goes over uh, this rapid fire at high tiers now over these slides um if you compare this to the league uh, announcement from PFX about Settlers of Cargo, right? Which was just a 45 minute video where they threw in everything, just just everything that is new, but not everything, actually only the important things that are new in the video, concise and composed together. And Blizzard is always, they just waste your time. Like, why go over all this? Okay, they, they made it feel more like waves. Cool, but why all that step by step? It's just so tedious and so so long-winded. Just get to the point. So just say, okay, we actually made it so it feels more like waves. Done. One sentence. You didn't need a whole slide for that. What Blizzard is doing is literally just the, the big company, corporate company kind of thing. That you're doing in your when you have your PowerPoint presentation, you have to do you just plaster the slides with bullshit instead of getting to the point. You know the infernal, or rather the eternal quest line here. So this is your seasonal. This is what you start with. If you want to have this seasonal quest line, you have to play seasonal. And then here it's the same thing. These. But these are seasonal rewards, so you're still better off making a seasonal account, like character rather. And so, uh, yeah, so that's where we ended up with the uh, quest lines. And you can play, you can still and play it in the final thing I want to tell, but it, the dungeon, you don't get the lore, basically. Done a few teases of before. And so what we did is we pulled in a lot of elements from the Infernal Hordes, and we're using this as an opportunity to introduce those elements. So you see right here, we've got a simple Infernal Choice 
that shows, you know, that basically says, okay, do I want my boss to be a little simpler or a little more difficult? And you get to choose. Hopefully the person playing chose the more difficult one I didn't see, but um, you're going to be rewarded a lot more for taking okay. the risk of making the boss more difficult. And you're going to be earning Burning Aether, and at the end there are going to be some spoils that you can spend on. And like I said, Even more side events. I like this a lot. It's actually something I always liked toward, in... Uh, encountering the in Diablo 4, is these sort of is it random events you just come by on the map, on the world rather. I like it. I always like this. I think it's kind of cool. So more of that, sure. Damn, that's separately enchanting one big. I don't know if I like this because you already have a junk full of junk every time you play this with items you don't need, like legendaries. You don't really need them. Really buff the unique drops, if anything. So far. They are doing exactly what I was predicting in my video, <clears throat> that all of them doing. Last Epoch, Diablo 4, Perfect, all of them are doing the same thing, probably without even knowing it. What they're doing is they're all making their games more accessible for casuals. In other words, they're making them easier and less focused on endgame. Maybe there's more endgame stuff coming here, coming here. But by, by endgame, I mean stuff that is really tough to get to, very hard to get to, and to beat, for example. Think Elden Ring DLC, right? Which is, you can only get to if you actually beat the initial game, mostly. And all the RPGs are actually going in another direction. They're actually not going that way. They're making it easier. So, I don't know. Anyway, so far, um, the game mostly seems like uh, the Season 5 Kind of involved, so far, it's really just so, a patch, um, uh, balance patch, a more forgiving and with the Infernal Hearts. I wonder if there's actually a lot more new stuff coming. So, I'm a bit bored, I'll be honest, because this is just... It's not bad stuff, but it's just a basic... This could have just been a patch, honestly. So, I'm waiting for the big stuff a whole new season brings. What is the season mechanic? Is it really just the Infernal Hordes? This is pretty much what it seems to be. Season 5 is a balanced patch. So far, this seems what it is. Because let's be honest, so far, the only thing we've gotten as a new season mechanic is Infernal Hordes. Sure. And again, a progression with a little bit of a side quest lore story ish thing. Without doing a lot of math, the TLDR here is barbarians are staying the same, uh, rogues are going to get a bit of a bump, a bit of a buff, and the other three classes are going to get even more damage. So as you get that core stat, which you get okay, just, commonly, you know, just more damage. I like that. Places, it's great. Just gonna be doing more damage. That's great. That's a good buff. Way that we're going to be catching up the classes. Also, a very uh, elegant solution, one. I think. I like that. So next, let's move on to kind of our class pick. And every so what I don't understand though is why didn't they just make all the other classes yeah, stronger and kept barbarian as each is? Other? So that, you know, there's actually a choice when you get to your key passive of which one to take. So I just want to clarify that of, you know... If your class loses damage, your favorite class, that's always but, a feels you know, bad moment, it's not right? All doom and gloom, even more than other Let's fucking go, Sorceress. Yes. Really good, uh, is the Please. Hold, and I think we've hit it. And I'll be going over some of them a little bit later. Um, we also buffed all of their core and mastery skills by about 15 to 20%. Nice. Just baseline. Remember, this is in addition to the core stat buff. All of your oh, core yeah. and mastery skills are also getting buffed baseline. Uh, by a pretty significant degree, so you're just going to hit harder. Um, we also did multiple defensive buffs. You know, we heard a lot of feedback that they have trouble surviving in situations that the other classes yeah, that is true. away with. Um, these are some examples. We did more than this, but ice armor, your base shield amount is Okay, that's good. Uh, ice armor makes you unstoppable. Uh, 1% per 15 up, intentions, 1% per 20. Oh, damn. Okay, so also is, is getting get it. It used to be 1 per 50 some good buffs. You'll love to see it. So we've done that this is actually now. correct. Um, we've updated nearly every another legless the season to fix the core kind of game. Recap, Pretty much what this does. And then giving you some examples of what we did. So these I'm not mad are about dramatic. it. Um, they're going to be showing you. But we got to be honest with ourselves. It's mostly a balance patch really that season. Media idea of the different categories. We have uh, all the rules that have stats that break normal slot rules. So you know things like ah. movement speed on bows or cooldown reduction on weapons, stuff like that. That is cool, actually. These also can now have tempering affixes, right? None of them really did this at the in season four. Oh. But now that tempering's in the game, and uniques have to compete with these really great tempered items. Uniques can have that too. Um, they can also Damn. have much higher potential stat values compared to normal items. So you know, if a normal item has twenty to forty percent more damage, 
a unique can be like poggers one to three hundred let's type it in more damage or whatever right and we Wait, do not have 70 v on affixes, so you need why is it not showing juice lent a point rng to the max and it's a bad item though is like has a huge range of what you can i mean 300 so like a, a but one to 300 is just... could be like a best in slot item for a lot of builds the, uh, the lucky hit chance on this yes this, this is the one that people this is good that we, uh, it's just crazy i talked with our one of the priests on our team i want to shout out uh, this sucks our team, i think but this is really crazy in, uh, we have to work 150 in the damn look at this just, move that into the, uh, just doubled you know a baseline uh, inherent affix next one resource 300 percent damage with something useful with uh, max crit and, and damage and by 100 like, percent even in season four because that durability loss was kind of uh was actually hidden that is uh staff mm -hmm. <laughs> that is insane damage dude on this thing affix. the staff now does some and the gloves would be doing some unique things to fireballs one is but plus fireball projectile speed so See, this is, this is now exactly fly what we're we talking about. This is actually insane. Quicker, and so you'll be able to get through them and they'll, you know, finish. This is actually faster. insane. You've got the tempering recipe now, so it doesn't... I need this now. Yeah, it has the tempering twice. thingy now. The cast twice thing. It goes up to 75% just on that one stat. So it basically almost solves it for you by itself, which is pretty huge. You've got that is insane. That is not really good. But this is pretty now, much now, if you want to play a fireball build, you need this item. Um, and then, you know, you right. see at the bottom that your amount and other classes... Okay, you need actually both of these. Attack speed, sorry, on other slots. Also, you get mana when fireball explodes. That is great. Uh, I played with this build, and I think it was season... So this is oh, yeah. that we haven't really done. Ooh, we have these that is great for my Blizzard build. Powers internally, but, you know, these things like dust devils or ice spikes that are, like, powers... Oh, hell yeah, I need this. ...skill that are usually through legendaries or uniques. We generally don't manipulate them too heavily. Like oh yeah, I think the Paragon system actually sucks. Personally, so, what's really cool about this is you know we basically added a new. It's just like you, you get your level up and then you get plus five int. Wow, right? crazy, crazy you know, stuff, man. Of course, there are some some nodes in there, and with the are they wo wove have woven the Nightmare Dungeons in this with the with upgrading um the what are they called the sigils. That is kind of cool, but the Paragon system itself. Get this proc, and now you can get this, you know, against single bosses. Or why? Why all this stuff? Just give me, just bring it all down a lot, so you don't have a hundred fucking points you can put in. And instead, just from what is it? It starts at fifty. Like after fifty levels, and each level gives you like a main node or something. It really buffs your thing up. You can keep the Paragon system, but not so many balls. There's fucking ten balls or whatever. This is just stupid. Just have one. It has a bunch of cool things you can choose from in the direction. Pretty much like an extra skill tree that you can combine or whatever. And you can level up with the Sigils. That would be cool. Why have this huge thing that's just so annoying? Anyway, John, since you're, since you're late in here, because it's been going for like an hour, because Blizzard is notoriously bad at actually getting to the point. You know how it is. <coughs> <clears throat> they, they've been wasting our time a lot with these PowerPoint slides, but so far season five seems like a huge, a huge balance, balance patch mostly. They're just <clears throat> getting the the core game out of beta slowly. That's what they're doing with this, <laughs> to be honest. Um, we, we're getting closer to the final release. Also, one thing I really didn't like they added is that. Helltide and all this, or not just Helltide, any sort of bosses, but especially Helltide, I think they mentioned the chests. They drop way more legendaries now. And I'm like, come on. We already get a lot of bullshit legendaries we can't use anyway. Most of them we... we um, what's it called when you destroy them in the blacksmith? Destroy, I guess. Um, so this is even more now junk I have in my inventory that is always filled with legendaries. I don't know. Uh, so like Dan, the savior from all Just the randomly videos. dropping the fact that there will be new uniques, none of which we have seen yet. Uh, hot this is the Understood developer update. Rare and magic items. They have not shown us like one single new unique. Why? Yeah, Why? Uh, <laughs> Give us the new stuff, man. I can see the reworks in the patch notes you will bring up later. Show me the new stuff. I, I, I'm, they really got a... Uh, Gotta uh, fix their marketing. Change the way skills. All right, so how do we actually? So, so here's sort of my first impression from this whole thing. First of all, this whole season looks more like a balance patch, and I think actually we can go into full cam here. I think.
I think it's really mostly... Diablo 4 is still in beta. Let's be honest about this. Same like last Epoch, still in beta. The core game is not fleshed out. They're still trying to balance the main game as is. And now that it's great that all the underperforming classes are being buffed, especially my girl Sorceress is getting a lot of great buffs. Druid is getting some buffs. Not as insane as I thought it would be, but I might actually just play it. I'm looking good overall, but it's just balancing. This could have just been a patch, honestly, a big patch. This doesn't really need to be a season in my eyes. Now, for the seasonal content, we have the Infernal Halts, which I don't like. Personally, I don't like Arena Modes. If you like it, that's fine. I don't like it. I'm going to play it a little bit to test it, but meh. That's a meh feeling for me. And, of course, a little bit of side quest for the seasonal content. But seasonal content is really not much. There's no new mechanic. There's no new cool effect. It's just the Infernal Halts, which is just an Arena Mode. It's not even something crazy. And a little bit of quests, or like a little bit of lore, I guess. Outside of that, not much. So content-wise, that season is a bit lackluster. I mean, we get some more uniques. Apparently, they are not in the patch notes for some reason, but we get some. And of course, all the buffs. So the, generally, it's good we get this, okay? This season is going to be good. Going to be a lot of fun. Underperforming classes are good. Bob is getting nerfed. Great. Not great, but understandable. So, generally, good direction, but for a season it feels a bit weird. It is great for a patch, just a balanced patch, a big one for the game, but for seasonal content it seems a bit weird. Maybe they're putting all their efforts right now in the Vessel of Hatred expansion, so this they didn't have the manpower to do this, I don't know. Um, overall, I'm very happy with it, it's going to be a lot of fun making some new builds with the, with the new uniques and the reworked uniques, because all pretty much all uniques get reworked. That is great. They got all super buffed, so your um, your characters, your builds actually do damage. That is great. But um, yeah, from, from a seasonal perspective, it feels kind of a bit of a bit like last personally. But if you look at it from a game perspective, just how, where in the direction the game is going, perfecto, magnifico. It's great, great direction. Buff all the classes, give them more power. Um, people have already said that going into the trillions and billions damage uh, damage numbers is bad. That's a Diablo problem for sure. Now with buffing all the other classes, this will be even stronger. But it's fine. Just buff him so every, every class is strong. One thing I like also a lot is that they're making the game more accessible in the sense of... Um, for example, it's just little details like you can respawn bosses right in the map. You don't have to get out of the con of the dungeon, then go back into it. It's 15 seconds saved, sure, but still, it just feels unnecessary and tedious. It's just stupid. So you can just do it right away. Um, same thing with needing less mats, materials to actually do bosses because I hate this material system. I don't know why this is in ARPGs. I think it's absolutely pointless and stupid, personally, that you have to first get mats materials of any kind to even do a boss has just unnecessary extra work in my eyes but at least they're re reducing the necessary materials for that another great thing i like is that the real bosses are actually tankier now they have some sort of normalized um normalizing damage of the characters against the bosses so that is great so they're not die dying in one second they're now dying in five seconds generally in the right direction though so overall i like this a lot Great season, going to be a lot of fun. I'm going to play this a lot, I feel like. Um, going to be great. Some, f It's not much new content there. So it's mostly for guys like me making new build guides and stuff. That is cool. On top of that, it's not that much. But it's a great balancing patch. It will be coming there. So I think a lot of people will enjoy it. Tell me in the comments what you think of it. Is is what you expected? Is it not much? Do you hate it? Does it need more? What do you feel like? Tell me in the comments below and I will see you guys in the next video.